You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. You see, here's the issue. Uh, The silver equities could go crazy. If we look at what's happening with Tesla, initially, if there's silver anywhere in the name of that stock, it'll go up during this, this price move. It'll go up. If you look at all the stocks in the world, there's just not that many silver stocks. And people starting to get into those, you could see some crazy prices. Welcome back to another Mining Stock Education episode. I am your host, Bill Powers. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to engage the show, feel free to reach me at bill at miningstockeducation.com. And today's focus will be on the precious and industrial metal, which is silver. A very um, Silver has a very ardent following online, and I am a silver bull myself. In fact, I invest in mining stocks currently because after the Lehman Brothers collapse from about 2013 through about 2016, I was buying physical silver from about $22 an ounce all the way down to $14 an ounce. And it was late 2015 when silver went under $14 an ounce. I said to myself, this is ridiculous. I've been accumulating physical silver for uh, the reasons that many people do because it's a true store of value concerns about a derivative meltdown, excessive sovereign debt, the devaluation of the dollar, uh, those type of ideas drove me into protecting my wealth with physical silver. And then I said, silver so low, it's got a bottom, it's got to turn sometime soon. That's when I turned to mining stocks and I invested in silver mining stocks. I believe it was January 21st in 2016. I I bought a bunch of silver mining stocks, including several silver junior mining stocks. And that was two days after the mining stocks bottomed. So as Rick Rule often says, I for that six months when all I experienced was extreme gains, I can confuse a bull market with brains because my equity positions were going up so fast. I bought first majestic silver at under two dollars and eighty cents a US dollars per share, saw that go over nineteen dollars, and that's on a major exchange, so about an eightfold gain or so within about six months. Some of the silver juniors went up ten times had one silver company that didn't do anything. It went up threefold just because it was associated with silver. And that journey was the impetus to why I now focus on mining stock investing. And then out of that experience and initial success and desire to learn more, I launched this show, Mining Stock Education. So that's a little history for those of you that don't know why I initially started this show. Well, my guest today is an expert analyst. He focuses on the economy, precious metals, and oil. His name is Steve St. Angelo of srsrockoreport.com. Steve is a returning guest, and I am sure that many of you have followed Steve's work. He's been uh, one of the most popular analysts when it comes to precious metals uh, analysis on the internet. Again, his website is srsrockoreport.com. He also has a very popular YouTube channel, and you can find it under SRS Rocco Report. Uh, he is a self-supported analyst, too, so if you like what you hear from Steve today, You go check out his uh, free uh, articles that he writes up. There's no paywall there. He is supported via Patreon, so I'm going to put a Patreon link in the show notes if you feel uh, inclined to support Steve's work. So, Steve, thanks for taking the time to come back on Mining Stock Education. And as I shared uh, my story and the expectation that we would eventually see silver rise, perhaps even a blow-the-top off rise due to financial issues, But as I understand the way you look at it, you do see a steep rise in silver forthcoming. However, you don't necessarily limit it to being a financial issue. Is that right? Yes. uh, Thanks very much for uh, uh, interviewing me today. It's it's a very interesting topic, uh, Bill, that you talked about. And I did want to ask you this before we start. You said that you, you were lucky enough you got in the bottom in 2016. And I remember that time. Uh, did you did you st- stay in uh, with the with the miners or did you sell some off? Very good question. I sold some off, and my wife was telling me she's like, "You got so much gains here, just sell, just sell." And I said, "No, honey, you know, silver's only at twenty one dollars. I believe it's going to fifty and beyond." And then uh, they turned over that summer, so my realized gains on a lot of them were only about two to four hundred percent. 
Yeah, that, but that's still pretty good. I yes, mean, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I guess in the mining industry, there's the idea of the ten bagger. Everybody everybody wants to get rich overnight, and that's that's a nice thing to do. But sometimes plugging away is a good idea. But what you brought up about the um, what's driving the silver price, you're going to get a lot of different opinions. But what it really comes down to, it's the cost of production based upon the energy cost as well as the declining ore grades. Now we can add the cost of who owns that ground. If it's in Mexico, you're gonna pay a royalty. But really, it's that's what it comes down to. And that's there's a, been a, a cost of production trend line. I have done that with, uh, and what I'm talking about now, Bill, is the commodity price. This is what it costs to produce silver if we look at it right now as a commodity. And that's kind of what the way the market is, is pricing silver. But silver is also a money and a store of value, and the market isn't pricing it at in that range or in that value currently. But if we go by the way it's it's being priced, if we go back to the early 2000s, uh, the cost of oil was about $25, $30 a barrel. And, and the ore grades were about 13 14 on the top miners, ounces per ton. Now, if you fast forward to today, the cost of oil has doubled. Uh, it's, it, it, well, let's say as of last year, it was $50 to $60 a barrel. And according to my analysis, the top miners, their ore grades had fallen in half to about 6.8. So it's the, the cost of production has gone from four or five dollars back in the early 2000s and now it's 14 15 and in some cases 16 dollars and so this is the reason why we kind of had a floor in the silver price and it took me a little while to figure that out but th that's the re so to say that silver could go to five dollars I don't I don't see that happening because then you would be basically bankrupt the entire primary silver mining industry uh, and, and lastly, sp supply and demand forces, like we had in 2009, 10, and 11, they were they, with, with supply and demand, when, especially when it's paper demand, investment demand, speculative demand, it pulls the market price of silver above that production trend line when there's a lot of demand for whatever reason. And then when, the, when there's a, a lot less demand, it could pull it below that cost of production trend line, not by much, but I have a chart on Pan American silver for the last 20, 15 years. And most of the time it was above, but some years, especially I believe in 13, 14 and 15, Pan American silver, full cost, they were losing a little bit of money per ounce. So that's kind of how the price of silver is being dictated in the market. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. Arcana Corporation is on the verge of bringing the world's highest grade silver mine into production. The Revenue Virginius Mine in Colorado has proven improbable silver reserves grading nearly 37 ounces per ton silver with an all-in sustaining production cost of only US $8 per ounce of silver. The mine is fully permitted with infrastructure already in place and the company has announced they plan to commence production in 2020. Achieving successful production usually results in a significant up upward share price re-rating on the Lasan curve. Arcana trades under the ticker AUN in Toronto and AUNFF in New York. To learn more, go to arcana.com. That's A-U-R-C-A-N-A.com. When you do your future silver price analysis and you're looking at the average cost of production, and obviously oil is a huge input and you focus on oil, oil is a huge input into the cost of production. What other inputs into production costs do you focus on? Um, if, if we're talking about the commodity price mechanism? Yes, silver price. What the silver, what goes into a silver miner producing an ounce of silver? Uh, Bill, it, it basically comes down to the energy because uh, let's say you need you need limestone or you need cyanide or you need uh, uh, tractors or haul trucks or any materials. They're all based on the energy price. And so as the energy goes up, it thunders through and it impacts the cost of all these things because even though a, a, a mining company may purchase capital equipment and on their, uh, their, their 10K on the annual report, they'll say we spent uh, 25 million on capital expenditures. Well, that's what it says, but the energy it took to produce all those materials and trucks 
it's really an energy cost. So when you when you when you go to the lowest common denominator, it's always the energy and the full energy from all forms and all stages. Now, you could break it down into different aspects, you know, into materials, labor, even human labor. A lot of it's human labor, uh, specialized human labor. And so that's another form of energy. So this is this is what is impacting. And the reason why gold is is uh, the silver to gold ratio right now is like 80 to one. Well, it costs about 80 times more. You know, the cost is 80 times more to produce an ounce of gold than it is an ounce of silver. It's really that simple. As you're looking at silver and a future price rise in silver, would in if you had a guess, would you say would the future, the catalyst, the big event that would cause a steep rise, is that going to come from something in the financial sector, or can you say I identify it in the energy sector right now, and and what would be the the canary in the coal mine for ultimately a future silver price rise? Yeah, I did a recent uh, video called "The Coming Exponential uh, Silver Price Rise," and there's this there's this interesting financial guy, uh, Scott uh, Menard from Guggenheim, and he's one of the few financial guys out there at Davos saying that he sees silver is going to that's his that's his bet uh, for 2020 and he says that there's a good possibility it could go up exponentially and and the thing is the reason why has to it is a financial reason bill but again finance is based on energy if you don't burn energy you don't have economic growth if you don't have economic growth you don't have any financial assets so energy comes first, growth comes second. Then you say, well, I made a profit. Now you've got financial assets. And so it, it, it's the energy that's going to impact the financial assets. And right now I look at it's been uh, frustrating for, for precious metal investors, especially silver. As you mentioned, this, you know, uh, the silver price uh, hit 50. It's fallen. It's, it's now in the 17, 18 range. And a lot of people are frustrated. Uh, at least gold is 1500 but the thing is I, I do see silver as the wild card as the underdog because there's just not much of it investment stocks in the world and so when we have this problem with energy and it's the global oil production you've got to keep your eye on global oil production especially u.s shale and I, i've done an article on that when that peaks it doesn't then that means global gdp will also peak without an increase in global oil supply every year, you do not have an increase in GDP. They go hand in hand. And so when there's this problem with oil production, and I believe we're going to see that within the next several years, then when you start getting, when the, gro the growth starts to flatten and decline, it won't take much. As you know, the entire world is a highly leveraged debt-based financial system Ponzi scheme. And it won't take much to start you know, disraveling that whole thing. And so that's the reason why I see an exponential increase in the price of silver, because these financial assets only do well on rising oil production. They fall apart when it peaks and declines. And silver and gold, are, are they are a real store of this energy equivalent value. Paper assets and money are not. With this uh, template that you view silver and the silver price with how do you view the futures contract as you know many focus on the manipulation of the spot price that can be done through the futures contract how do you view that well there's two ways of looking at that uh, bill if we throw out all the futures contracts what's the price of silver right now 17 and a half dollars what's the cost to produce at 15 they're making two bucks an ounce that's a profit so if we say all the future contracts are manipulating the price, I would say I, I would be uh, yelling bloody murder if the price of silver was was ten dollars or seven dollars an ounce, because then you'd be bankrupting the entire primary silver mining industry. So the futures contracts are based upon a, a future supply of the way this the market is set up uh, as silver as a commodity only. So if you view silver as a commodity only and it costs fifteen dollars, the miners are making a couple of bucks. You know they're happy, right? So the, the the manipulation card doesn't make any sense. Where it makes sense is when you understand that silver is more than a commodity. 
it's it's this store of value. And the reason why it's a store of value, not because the Austrian School of Economics say it is, it's because it has been a store of energy equivalent value for two, three thousand years. It's it's done it for two or three thousand years. Hasn't changed at all. And a paper money does not have that store because a hundred dollar bill, the U.S. Treasury, they pay 15 cents. Now, if you're going to print, produce twelve hundred dollar bills that cost the U.S. Treasury a dollar eighty. But there's twelve hundred dollars of, of, of money supposed there to, for goods and services. It costs twelve hundred dollars to produce an ounce of gold. So that's the difference with the gold money. It's all the energy that went into that gold. It's a store of energy equivalent value that those twelve one hundred dollar bills only store one tenth of one percent of the energy that gold that gold does. And it, it's the same thing in a ratio with silver. And so all this money that's out there, it's the futures contracts are the same thing too, Bill. You bring up a good point. When the oil production peaks, a lot of these these paper, the paper money, the M2 money supply, the future contracts, that's going to start running into trouble because there's too much paper pushing so little real physical. It works when production of the oil in the world increases. It kind of falls apart when things, when oil production declines, when peaks and declines. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. Silver One Resources is an exploration and development company backed by strategic investors Eric Sprott and SSR Mining. At Silver One's Candelaria Mine Project in Nevada, there is already a historic resource estimated at 127 million ounces of silver, which Silver One is developing and advancing. The company's Phoenix Silver Project, located within the Arizona Silver Belt, is an early stage exploration project on which native silver vein fragments have been discovered near surface. One grab sample assayed an astounding 14,688 ounces per ton. Yes, that's right. Ounces, not grams. Silver One has tremendous exploration potential, is extremely leveraged to the price of silver, and is cashed up and poised to increase shareholder value. Silver One trades in New York under the ticker SLVRF and in Toronto under the ticker SVE. To learn more, go to silverone.com. That's silverone.com. Steve, would you be um, a proponent of peak oil and uh, also peak silver, if we could say that? Well, I, I am. Uh, there's two kinds of peaks. There's there's conventional peak, and we've 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 kind of did that in 2008. Even though there's been like a, a level for the last 10 years, what we have added is unconventional. And let me tell you, this is how how bad it is. If if global oil production growth allows GDP growth, the United States has accounted for 75% of GDP growth over the last 10 years because U.S. shale oil production has accounted for 75% of global oil production growth. Why is that bad news? Because the mature oil fields of the world deplete about 4% a year. The U.S. shale oil fields decline 45%. So we have added this very high cost, low quality oil that declines almost 50% a year. And that's what's driving this global economy and it won't last. And so we had peak silver in, in 2015, it was about 885 million ounces. I believe the, the um, forecast this year is about 849. Most of that was due to pr- losses in primary because the, the silver price fell so much in, 15, in 13, 14 and 15. Uh, interesting, the base metal supply of silver since 2015 has actually gone up uh, from zinc and lead and copper. It's gone up a few percentage, but from primary sources, it's fallen. And even from gold, a byproduct of gold mining, it's fallen. So I do believe it's going to get, and here's a good thing. This is very important for silver investors because 61% of silver comes from base metal mining, when oil production does peak, it's going to impact the base metal mining industry much more. There's going to be less supply of silver. And so this is why silver to me is a much more important undervalued asset than gold. Therefore, silver's price would rise 
in that scenario. Yeah. The reason why is because then it comes down to real supply and demand. Because the because uh, the energy production declines are going to kind of it's like the tsunami when that when the water comes in, the production comes up, the production rises, GDP rises. But when the tsunami comes in and it comes back out, you see the devastation. And then when the, when production falls, it, it, it destroys financial assets. It destroys the value of real estate. It destroys stocks. It destroys bonds. What's left? There's really not that much left. And so the precious metals will then be the key store of this value because stocks, bonds, real estate, and paper money do not store energy equivalent value. They are, they are IOUs, and that's the big difference. So yes, I do see, and not only, we don't need to see silver go to 500 or 1,000, or gold go to 50,000, gold could go to 5,000, silver could go to 100, but what if everything else has fallen? You have protected your wealth. While everybody else is getting, is losing value, that's another aspect that people don't see coming. With uh, the scarcity of silver, of course, the price would rise. Would you agree with those that would say, you know, the efficient market theory would say, if even though silver grades are lowering um, on an annual basis, we see that trend, but as the silver price rises, that's going to incentivize the development of new technology and the uh, exploration for more silver. So eventually, even if it's years down the road, more silver supply would be brought to market to meet that demand. Would you agree with that? I would not. Uh, if you look at a simple chart starting from a thousand years ago and you plot um, silver production, copper production, gold production, population, and then you bring on oil. It all goes crazy in the eight, eight, late 1800s, early 1900s. We produce, so much, we produce almost all the gold we've ever produced in silver in the world in the last 100 years, 115, 20 years, all due to oil, all due to oil. So if oil production is going to fall, silver production and gold production, copper, all going to fall. And as unfortunately, as well as the population, because basically the, the, the agriculture in the world is based upon fossil fuels. Now, the thing is, what could happen, base metal mining uh, byproduct silver supply will likely fall. But what could happen for a while is the silver price rises. You could see more primary mines. Because this is important for your listeners to understand. It takes 80 times less energy to produce an ounce of silver than it does an ounce of gold. Sometimes 100 times less. I've done the math. And, and so that's the issue. If it costs a lot less to produce primary silver, 80 times less, well, you can produce more silver. So yes, we could see more primary silver production, but I don't think it's going to offset the, the declines coming from base metal. With these assumptions that you've just articulated thus far in the show, how do you view silver equities? As I mentioned in the introduction, I like silver equities. I'm in fact overweighted in uh, silver mining stocks right now in my personal portfolio. But, but how do you view silver equities? I think the silver equ equities, you see, here's the issue. Uh, the silver equities could go crazy um, because Look what happened with home stake mining back in the um, back in the 1930s when Roosevelt revalued uh, the price of gold. It went from 20 to 35 dollars overnight. Well, you know the, the oil price, the energy cost didn't go up, just the gold price did. So there was a huge, huge uh, increase in in uh, the the, pro the profit, the stock price, and the dividends that were being paid to home stake mining. Uh, shareholders. So I could see the same kind of thing. I do. And actually, I believe the silver miners, the primary silver miners, as you know, there aren't many of them. There's a lot more uh, gold miners than there's silver miners. Uh, and the reason is it's just, it's much more difficult. There's not that many good primary silver uh, ore deposits. And a new paper just came out in just the last 10, 12 years. The top primary uh, silver deposits, their reserves have fallen 50%. The proven reserves have fallen 50%. So the thing is, to me, when looking at the primary mining, this, the, these mining stocks, I do believe 
if we look at what's happening with Tesla initially, if there's silver anywhere in the name of that stock, it's it's it it'll go up during this this price move. It'll go up, but I do believe um, th- those miners that uh, are been around longer. Those miners that have a lower cost of production, they have more real proven reserves, and they're not in geopolitical areas that are unstable. And these are kind of the things I would look at. But to tell you the truth, the way things happen in our economy and in our market, uh, I don't think you could go wrong with, 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 with any of these silver stocks. Because you know what? If you look at all the stocks in the world, there's just not that many silver stocks. And people starting to get into those, you could see some crazy prices. I absolutely agree. Uh, Steve, one more question on the silver equities. As I thought through and have tried to understand uh, how you uh, look at energy, silver, and the silver equities, I thought perhaps a company like uh, formerly Silver Wheaton, Wheaton Precious Metals, a company that has royalties on silver producers might be something that would be a lower risk, but also provide tremendous upside because if oil does go up, then that's one of the key inputs to a silver producer's costs. So even as silver goes up, uh, we anticipate it's gonna go up a lot more than the cost of production for an ounce of silver, but a royalty company isn't going to even need to buy the extra oil or the extra energy to produce an ounce of silver. They're just going to get their cut of what's returned from uh, the smelter, a stream or royalty, whatever agreement they have. Uh, have you thought about that? Yes, you bring up a good point. <clears throat> the uh, royalty companies have all the benefits <laughs> and and uh, not really all the, the the downside, right? They don't have they, they have a they gave the investment. And now they get a royalty, and that's fine. That's that that was the contract. So I do believe you're right. Um, I don't see oil prices going up very high. The value of oil is not worth it. That that goes against the whole economic theory. But that's the way I look at it. I actually see falling oil prices. However, let's just look at the royalty companies, Silver Wheaton or Franco Nevada. They're actually very smart because they own stakes in many mines. If you put your eggs in a few baskets, a few mines, one of those goes under for whatever reason, is taken over by by the by the the state, uh, the country, the national government. It, it's a lot less uh, of a risk if you invest in something like these royalty agreements that have more of a uh, widespread ownership of many different mines. And as you said, they don't have those the overhead costs. So I do believe these royalties could do very well. And they're, they're less risky. You've been listening to Steve St. Angelo, independent analyst at srsrockoreport.com. And again, his YouTube is under that same name, SRS Rocco Report. Steve, as we conclude, uh, what final thoughts would you like to share with the investors that have been listening to us? I think if we start looking at the world with energy, it'll change how you you look at the world. You get up in the morning, you use energy to make breakfast. You take a shower, that takes energy. If you want to go to work, you get in a car, that takes energy. You get to work, it's all about burning energy, whether you're working in a manufacturing plant, at a restaurant, or you're working at some computer firm. It's all about energy. So you you have to force yourself to learn what's going on with energy because it's the number one driver of the economy. And the, the number one driver of energy is oil. And the, the, the leading indicator that will give us an idea of what's going to happen is what's happening with U.S. shale oil production. So if we keep an eye on the energy, it will give us clues what's going to happen with the global economy and then how that's going to impact assets and the precious metals. Excellent. Thank you, Steve, for sharing your well thought through analysis. I really appreciate it. And thank you for coming on the show again. Been a pleasure. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.